So we're going to talk about a subject today that should be near and dear to some of you. Uh, we're going to be talking about alcohol and alcohol uh, metabolism specifically. So what happens? We're going to have an ethanol, so ETOH for ethanol, and that's going to get broken down by the body into different substances. Uh, very basically, we're going to go from ethanol to acetaldehyde. And then that will get further broken down by the body, by, by enzymes, into acetate. And that can get further broken down into acetyl-CoA, which can feed into the TCA cycle, and, uh, and then further be processed beyond that. So, So let's talk about how this process begins. I'm just going to move the camera back so it can get a good shot here. Because there is a little bit more that we need to fill in the blanks. Um, okay, so let's start with the first enzyme. What enzyme converts uh, ethanol into acetaldehyde? So this is going to be alcohol dehydrogenase. There's my shorthand for an enzyme, so anything that has a little squiggly around it is going to be an enzyme. So alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme is going to convert ethanol into acetaldehyde. Further, the acetaldehyde is going to be what's toxic to the body. This is what causes uh, some of the bad symptoms of alcohol. Alcohol itself isn't going to be as toxic as acetaldehyde. So the body really wants to get rid of this intermediate product. To do that, we're going to use acetaldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme, and that's going to convert the acetaldehyde into acetate. So that's, that's pretty simple. Well, each one of these enzymes is going to need something else. Uh, I'm going to get a different color here. The alcohol dehydrogenase is going to require an NAD. And it's going to spit out an NADH. So alcohol dehydrogenase is going to require the NAD, while also the acetaldehyde is going to require the same thing. So we can draw that in. Excellent. Okay. So that, that's kind of the backbone of what's going on. Uh, it, it would be kind of good to point out that let's get a different color even that this is going to be happening in the cytosol of the cell. So alcohol breakdown, ethanol breakdown is going to occur mostly in the liver. So it will be in the cytosol of the liver cells. While acetaldehyde is going to primarily occur in the mitochondria of these liver cells of the hepatocytes. So mito for mitochondria. Okay, so this is, so we're starting to piece together the picture of what's happening with alcohol breakdown. However, uh, you may have heard kind of on the street that the more you drink alcohol, the quicker you break down alcohol. Well, that doesn't really take into account these enzymes. These enzymes uh, have pharmacokinetic limitations. Uh, they do have V maxes, so there's got to be some other way we can get from ethanol to acetaldehyde and then further broken down. Because people who drink more often, uh, their liver enzymes are ramped up, they can metabolize that alcohol better, so they need to drink more to get the same effect. They need, they need to consume more alcohol for the same effect. So let's talk about that pathway a little bit. So we've got a different set of enzymes. Um, I'll, I'll stick with blue. And so we, we can bypass this alcohol dehydrogenase reaction. And that's going to be through the enzyme CYP2E1. So the CYP2E1 enzyme system. And this, I'm just going to put this in parentheses, is part of your cytochrome P450 system. Your P450 system, and then, well, let's put 
put this in red just so I can stick with the color coding. So your cytochrome P450 system are going to be in your liver again, and that's going to be in the microsomes of the liver in your uh, endoplasmic reticulum. So specifically, what's going to break down ethanol into acetaldehyde is going to be your COIP2E1 part of your P450 system of enzymes. So this is also just like up here, we needed, we needed a cofactor, so this enzyme can't just work alone. It's going to need an NADPH. Uh, NADPH is also used in other reactions in your body, pretty much for antioxidant effect. Um, so, and then this gets converted into an NADP. So, uh, while up here we are using NADs, converting them into an NADH, which could get fed into the oxidative phosphorylation cycle, now we're using up NADPHs. So that's a, that's a good difference to know. Also of note, um, if you really want to get specific, we have yet a third pathway. I promised it would get a little busier. All right, so here's a third pathway. So we have our normal route, which uses alcohol dehydrogenase. We have an alternate route that can get ramped up uh, by people who drink a lot. That's going to be your P450 system uh, in your liver. And then, nice. Since, since I'm going to stick with it in your microzone system, and that's going to be in your endoplasmic reticulum, we have a third system that the body can use. This is going to be in peroxisomes. So peroxisomes, when you think peroxisomes, think hydrogen peroxide. So an enzyme called catalase in your peroxisome So catalase in your peroxisome, this is going to convert the ethanol into acetaldehyde using hydrogen peroxide. It's going to convert that into water. All right, that should be in green, but I'll put it in green. So we have three different systems in the body that can convert the alcohol into acetaldehyde. So now let's move on to acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Not as exciting of an enzyme, uh, but there is one, one clinical note that I'd like to point out. What do we give alcoholics to discourage them, to train them to not uh, like alcohol? It, it's not a very effective drug. However, uh, what will happen is you'll give this drug to an alcoholic patient and they will get sick, they'll get nauseous, uh, they'll get toxic symptoms, and that hopefully will discourage them, and that'll associate with their alcohol intake, and that'll decrease their alcohol usage. So that drug is going to be called disulfiram. So disulfiram, what does disulfiram do? Well, this is going to be an inhibitor of the acetaldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme. Well, let's think about what that does. But if we inhibit this enzyme, if we knock this enzyme out, we're going to get a buildup of the acetaldehyde. And if we have an acetaldehyde buildup, uh, this is going to cause a headache. This is going to cause bad taste in the mouth. It's going to cause toxic symptoms, possibly a drowsy, drowsiness. So this is, this, is, uh, this is our alcohol system. Why do we even have it in the first place? You may be asking yourself. Uh, the body is going to produce a small amount of alcohol uh, naturally in fatty acid synthesis and then also in the biosynthesis of uh, bile acids. So our body needs this alcohol breakdown system um, to convert this alcohol back into a usable form of energy. So it, no, it was not invented by the body so that way we could drink, uh, drink at a bar. But instead, our body actually produces small amounts of alcohol, so thus we should probably be able to break it down. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of all this, and we're going we're gonna to draw it again. Except this time, come with a little different twist. Okay, so we're going to still put our backbone up. We're going to 
that's, that's not going to change. So alcohol still gets broken down into acetyl. Aldehyde, aldehyde, which gets broken down further. Um, and then what I'd like to point out is we have other stuff. So I'm going to get a different color here. We're going to use uh, methanol breakdown. Methanol breakdown. And that can get broken down. And then also I'll get a different color out. And we can have uh, ethylene glycol breakdown. So like windshield wiper fluid. Okay, so so how does methanol, alcohol, and ethylene glycol, besides ending in OL, indicating that it's an alcohol, it's a form of alcohol, how are these related? Well, um, we have our enzymes that were there before, so we have our alcohol dehydrogenase, so I'm just going to abbreviate it al dehydrogenase. So we have our alcohol dehydrogenase, then we've got our uh, acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, so ACE DH for acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Okay, which one of these uh, will we be using? We'll be mostly concerned about the alcohol dehydrogenase enzymes. Well, why is this? It's because alcohol dehydrogenase is going to be used to break down the ethanol, so ETOH, into acetaldehyde. We just covered that. Easy. But now, this enzyme, the alcohol dehydrogenase, is also going to be used for the breakdown of methanol and ethylene glycol. And this is, this is where the clinical picture gets a little more interesting. Uh, we all know that, that uh, alcohol gets broken down into acetaldehyde. Methanol is going to get broken down into a fun, fun product that you may be aware of, formaldehyde. Yes, and that's going to be the exact same formaldehyde that is used uh, to preserve things, preserve dead animals, preserve dead bodies, formaldehyde. And uh, just using common sense, is formaldehyde a good metabolic intermediate product? And that would be no, a very uh, staggering no. So if you ingest a high amount of methanol, your body is going to break it down by the liver system, by this alcohol dehydrogenase, into formaldehyde. And, and that's kind of where things get a little hairy. Uh, and lastly, it can get broken down into uh, a formic acid, a formate. And that can cause things like blindness. Typically, you'll, when you see methanol poisoning, you want to think blindness. And that's going to be your optic nerve that's going to be affected. When you think methanol poisoning, think formaldehyde. It's going to use the same system. You get blindness. Okay, so, so what are we going to do if we ingest a large amount of ethanol? How are we going to protect ourselves? Well, there are two different mechanisms. We can either give a drug or we can give alcohol. Wait, well, that's kind of interesting. You may be thinking to yourself, you'll give someone, so if somebody comes into the ER with an acute methanol poisoning, you may give them alcohol uh, in the form of a strong spirit, a, f a strong uh, liquor, or a pharmaceutical grade ethanol. Um, so why is this? Well, we all know that alcohol is going to use the exact same enzymes as methanol to break down into a different product. So they're both going to use the same enzyme, alcohol dehydrogenase. Uh, important concept to realize because if if we ingest methanol, we'll want to give alcohol. So this enzyme is saturated with alcohol instead of the methanol product. So that way we'll form a lot of acetaldehyde instead of formaldehyde and then formic acid. Also, there's a drug we can give, uh, a, a drug that we can give which is going to be an inhibitor, and that's fomepazole.
tomepazole. And tomepazole is going to be an inhibitor of this enzyme as well. So we can either use competitive inhibition with alcohol, uh, which will outcompete that methanol for this enzyme, or we can get, just straight give the drug tomepazole um, if it's available, which will be an inhibitor of the aldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme. And then what can happen is, uh, is if we block this enzyme, we're not able to form these products, so we'll be left with in the body a whole bunch of methanol still uh, that will not be broken down by the liver. Instead, all this methanol will get excreted by the kidney. So that's what happens. We, we don't want the body to break down that methanol that we ingested by the liver. Instead, we want it to be excreted and get rid of. So that is going to be our methanol. Now let's move on to ethylene glycol. Uh, ethylene glycol is going to be broken down into glycol aldehyde. Glycol aldehyde. And that's going to be the first intermediate product. Uh, then eventually it will get broken down into calcium oxalate. All right. Not as important. Uh, however, it is important to know that ethylene glycol ingestion, which is going to be your uh, uh, windshield wiper fluid, so ethylene glycol. You have a patient that comes in. This reaction is going to be also catalyzed by the alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme. So, so this, if, if I were you, I'd be starting to think this is a pretty darn important enzyme. It's used to break down methanol into some nasty byproducts. Used to break eth alcohol, ethanol, down into a nasty byproduct, but then it gets into a better byproduct. And then uh, lastly, it'll break ethylene glycol down into some pretty nasty stuff as well. So what do we get with an ethylene glycol toxicity? Well, we're going to get neurologic problems. We're going to get gastrointestinal problems. We're going to get metabolic acidosis. And then, uh, and then eventually down the road, we can get kidney failure if, uh, if this is not treated. So the ethylene glycol toxicity, what we're going to do is we're also going to give the fomepazole. Or we can give a high dose of alcohol uh, to outcompete this enzyme. So if we have a patient that comes in with an ethylene glycol toxicity, a high dose of alcohol is going to be your best choice. Just like methanol, we want to excrete this instead of break it down. And that's what the body's going to do if we get rid of this enzyme in the liver. Um, I think that should be enough. Uh, we covered disulfram, which is going to inhibit this. So if we want to give disulfram to an alcoholic patient, we break down this enzyme which gives us a buildup of acetaldehyde. That buildup of acetaldehyde is going to cause some toxic symptoms that the alcoholic will not like. When the alcoholic relates those toxic symptoms to their drinking, it'll cause a psychological form of feedback, thus making them not want to drink as much. That's the theory. Uh, the problem with disulfram is compliance. Uh, what alcoholic would want to take a drug that's going to make them sick if they drink? Uh, so that's, that's the big key with that one. Uh, otherwise, fomepazole is an excellent alcohol dehydrogenase inhibitor. Alright, if you found this video useful, please click like, comment if, uh, if you have any questions, or subscribe for more videos.